Welcome everyone to my channel. This is Jacqueline Jacks and we're doing watercolor today from the subscription box. This is the spring subscription. Um, this is the tulip subscription. So it comes with a palette of watercolors that have been curated for these beautiful tulips um, and additional things that I was able to paint with them just mixing them together and you know it's a great lesson it really is if you're a spring painter and you really have been looking forward to getting back into florals this is such a wonderful subscription very similar to the lesson that we did which was the cherry blossom palette which I absolutely love and it was one of your favorites too so I think we're all in um, agreement that it is time for flowers and time to say goodbye to winter and time to kick off our shoes and just enjoy ourselves here. So in this package, and by the way, if you haven't signed up and you really want to, by all means, come over to jackswatercolor.com. You'll see a monthly subscription prompt there and you just sign up for it. Uh, it's best for the US, Canada, the UK, that's where you get the most value because of the exchange rate. The other places, there might be a little additional charge for shipping, so just be careful. You can email me, but I will always ask you before we charge shipping so that if we need to get a little more extra, maybe like $10 or $15 in order to get it to you, you'll be able to approve or disapprove it. But in any case, this is the Tulip subscription. I was able to paint a lot of really fun florals with it, including like a more moody floral. So in the upcoming videos, we're gonna be playing with these colors, just similar to we did in the last series for the cherry blossoms. So let's take a look at what's in here. I've already gone ahead and unwrapped the palette. This is a <clears throat> beautiful palette of colors by My Mary Blue. And as you open the subscription, and notice I, I'm not closing these because you can reuse them a lot easier if I don't take the sticky off, but you can take the adhesive off if you'd like. This is the featured color. So the featured color this month is Jack's Monet Green, which is a handmade, beautiful, convenient green watercolor that I think you'll love. It's got just that little bit of uh, granulation to it and you can mix it with some of the blues and the yellows to just kind of like tint it in either direction and even the green gold mixes with it well. So well tested. And it is influenced by Monet. So. When you open it, you'll get a lovely Hello Spring card about the arrival of spring and how it just breathes life into every corner of the world. The flowers are so beautiful and if you're in a place like, uh, like I am here in Ontario, Canada, it's a kaleidoscope of hues. I mean, I look forward to this time of year. I sit outside and I paint. I go for walks multiple times a day with my dogs and just take as many pictures as I can because it is just so beautiful. But tulips in particular have that grace and elegance and I think they really take center stage in so many artists' watercolor paintings or oil paintings or acrylics. Claude Monet did some of the most beautiful uh, tulips. So did Vincent van Gogh and Georgia O'Keeffe. I actually outlined some of their better uh, paintings and how they used to be inspired by beautiful tulips on the back of the card if you want to go read it. And I think you'll really just submerge yourself in learning about different artists that um, were inspired by these kinds of colors and these kinds of subjects, but also maybe just think a little bit deeper about the subject matter of the month and hopefully enter our watercolor challenge to win something. So if you do paint this challenge, be sure to go on the group page on Facebook, which is now at 90,000 people, and I think we're gonna round 100,000 very, very shortly, um, and share it, tagging us at Jack's Art Challenge. And that way I'll know that it was from the Tulip Challenge. You know, just say I got the Tulip Challenge. I'm really excited to paint it. You know, here's what I did. And you can enter as many times as you'd like. You can do sketches, full watercolor paintings, anything you want within this month. So on the back of this card, you'll see what is, uh, what is the description of different painters that I've loved and how they have 
put their own spin on the tulips. The next card you'll see is the main swatches. These, this is a watercolor paper by Fabriano and it is part cotton, so it's a 50-50. And I give you this on watercolor paper so that you can get a feel for the lighter papers versus the 300 GSM. This one is 200, so you can kind of feel the difference, but still completely lovely and you can't paint through it. It's just a delicious paper. So I do all my subscription cards on this one because it, it's a nice one. It really is. It's a great paper. It's not wasteful. We're not blowing through uh, 300 GSM papers. This is just a really nice weight for you to um, experiment with. So there's swatches here. Then you can just kind of play around with the paint on this one. This is a sample of something I painted just to inspire you. The next side of it talks about the layering techniques of My Mary Blue's colors. My Mary Blue does do layers really well, very much like Sennelier. They're a professional grade watercolor and one that I like very much. And that's why you often see uh, different selections pop up in the watercolor subscription box. They do glazing really, really well, and glazing involves those thin transparent layers where you let each layer dry and then you paint over another. Uh, that can be seen here really, really well. This would be a glaze. So the yellow dries and then we paint the, the orange over it. Same thing here, it's more of a glaze, right? Because one color's on and the next color is over. Now most times uh, you do have to wait for it to dry in order for that to be a successful glaze. Um, otherwise it would be wet on wet, right? Because if the paint is still wet and you add more wet paint, then that would be wet on wet. Or if the paper is wet and you add paint to the paper, that would be wet on wet. So My Mary Blue doesn't seem to really run away with you like Core does. Core is one of those, you know, highly fluid watercolors. Uh, My Mary Blue, I think, is a great all-around watercolor for people who like layers, but also it has some, a little bit of granulation. Not as much as my personal handmade watercolors do, because I'm crazy about granulation. So you'll see a huge difference in between the watercolor that I sent in the palette and the granulation, the level of granulation that are in my honey-made watercolors, typically. <clears throat> They also do lifting pretty well. These are not highly, highly staining colors. Uh, typically with quinacridones or cadmiums, things like that, they do tend to be highly staining, especially in the reds, the oranges, and some of the yellows. Also some of the blues, Prussian tends to be a highly staining color, but I find that these are moderate to less staining and they tend to be a little easier for beginners to lift and do different things with. So you'll notice those are the main three things that uh, really highlight this watercolor for you. On the next card it's a little tulip study that talks about tulips, the shapes, and gives you a little explanation as to what the tulips are made up of. Uh, it's just, I think just out of curiosity, it's kind of fun to know and it imprints tulips and shapes in your mind. What this is meant to show you too is how they're blended in the colors. Some of the areas, notice the lights and the darks, the shadows, notice the colors variation of the different greens. Um, some are more blue greens, some are more sap greens. Then also, the tulips tend to be more than just one flat shade of color. They usually range from light to dark or just all light and different shades, like this is more yellow to orange to pink, you know, and if you kind of think of a sunset, I always think tulips are kind of like that, you know? And then of course there's a sample down here again of one that I painted, just as comparison. On the next one, I thought it'd be fun to do a mixing chart because these mix so well. And when you have watercolors that do mix well, um, you can get things like this and things like this. And when you, know what your colors do when they mix together. It's really important. So I did a mixing chart and what's so great about this mixing chart is that it's labeled for you. So it takes the guesswork out and I think a lot of times when you're trying to navigate a mixing chart you forget what goes where. So if you notice right here down the center row is where we have the actual paint colors. So we've got primary yellow, Prussian blue, green gold, rose lake, and permanent red light. It is 
kind of a smaller version of a split palette in that it's got a cool and a dark. So we've got like more of an orange red and more of a, a pinky red, a green gold, which is like middle of the road, a beautiful Prussian instead of your typical cobalt or ultramarine blue, and then a primary yellow. So this yellow is a beautiful mixing yellow. It's kind of somewhere in between, in my merry blue, it's in between a lemon and like an azo yellow or a warmer yellow, like an Indian yellow. Not quite as orange as the typical Indian yellow, not quite as orange as gamboge, and not quite as cool as the lemon. But I thought it was a great mixing color, so I chose that one for you guys, and I chose this Prussian blue instead of typical phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, or um, or the uh, cobalt blue. So you would paint the uh, center squares. So we're just going to grab some of these colors. They re-wet really easily. Just make sure my brush is nice and wet. And this is the, this brush, some of you did get brushes this month if you just signed up. Um, or if you were qualifying for a gift, you got a brush this month. So that's the yellow. We're going to put the Prussian here. And you can do this a lot of different ways. I'm just kind of doing it quick, but you can do more concentrated on one side. You can even wait for it to uh, dry and then glaze it and just practice different things on these little squares. But this is mostly just to teach you about mixing. So this is the green gold. Then we have, this one is the permanent red light, is down there. And the rosy one is the rose lake. And you can see the rose lake is a really beautiful, uh, a really beautiful color. So here they are. So we've got the primary yellow is in the first spot. The permanent red light is in the second spot. The rose lake is the third. Green gold is the fourth. And Prussian is the fifth. Then I didn't put the Monet green here because green tends to be a more, um, not really a mixing color, although you can influence it is what I consider um, a way to describe it. You can influence green. Green gold is more of the mixing color. This one is more of a um, granulating, thicker, honey-made watercolor that just really stands on its own. So what you would do with this is, if you want to influence it more with yellow to get more of the brighter greens, then you would just mix it with the yellow. And the other thing that could be mixed with it would be the Prussian to get more of those uh, like bluey greens. And depending on how much of the green you use in this mix, it's going to show you a lot of different shades. See how it's going more, leaning more towards that warm green rather than the cool blue. And then you can take green gold and put that in there. And you've got like a very warm kind of sap green. So that's just a few of the beautiful greens that you can get with this. Now, if you mix um, like the orange, you're going to strike those neutrals because these are not colors that really normally get mixed together. So this is how you get like your browns. And if you keep going with it, you'll get very, very neutral tones. If you add just a little bit of blue, Prussian blue, then you're going to get those nice uh, kind of greeny shadow shades. Let's see? almost like an undersea green type of thing. So lots of things to be able to see in your mixing. Look at all those greens you get here. So this is why this palette to me works so well. And it's surprising, right? It's a very curated palette. It's not one of those palettes where it's just tossed together. It actually does a lot just with these colors. You could pretty much paint anything with these colors. So you see if I even add some rose to this, I get yet another shade of like gray with a little bit of like that pink undertone and then you can keep as much as this isn't a very very highly staining color you can kind of keep adding that 
and even go more dusty and now you get kind of like a dusty pink almost like like a dusty potter's pink isn't that pretty you see it? it's really really pretty beautiful color so give those a try I think you'll really enjoy them and you'll have fun with the mixing chart and if you like the mixing chart please let me know because I would you know, be more than happy to do more mixing charts as we move through so the next step is to take the colors and mix them together right so I'm gonna take for this one it's got yellow Prussian so the yellow is first meaning that we're gonna mix more yellow so double the yellow into one little serving of Prussian and you're gonna get a beautiful bright green that's surprising right and that's what I love about this Prussian I think it just does a great job you know really pretty let me get in a little bit closer for you so that uh, there we go you get a better vision um, and then if you take the Prussian first right and you mix in a little bit of the yellow this is double Prussian to one yellow so the Prussian is labeled first showing you that that's the more dominant mix color in the mix and you'll get something in here you add more to it and this is your this is just one right you could do a whole nother sheet of additional shades here but this is just one to get you started then the green gold if we take the green gold and we mix it with yellow so we take yellow then we take a little bit of green gold where it's more dominant yellow than green gold and you're gonna see what you're gonna get and then if you take a lot more green gold and mix it in there and that's what you're gonna get up here so you can see the more yellow you put in the more kind of like it looks a lot cooler right because it's green gold it's a very very cool shade and then if you take the green gold and mix it with Prussian then you fill in that square now I found that by filling in the squares for you and telling you what to mix together and which one should be more dominant this made it a lot easier to understand how these charts go so learning wise I feel like if I label them for you and I take that time to do these in the subscriptions if you do want them I can do mixing charts whenever they apply to the palette and this is a very good mixing palette pretty right it's really pretty so you just keep going with it um, so let's go over the papers next and again if you want to just share your mixing palette to enter our contest definitely share your mixing palette and then color this in with some of your mixes so in the paper sampler you will find a sample of one of my paintings on the back is a list of the items and tags for the video challenge if you want to watch uh, more videos on the challenge and where to shop the watercolor and your members codes members codes can be used for 20% off everything in the watercolor store to be added to your next subscription and free shipping so that you don't have to pay additional shipping so these are uh, some lighter watercolor samples so these ones are more of the Fabriano and whenever I have these off cuts I will include them in the subscription because this is how I use them I use them as swatch cards you can cut them in half and they make perfect swatch cards now if you look up here I have in my studio these lipstick holders for my paint tubes and that's what I use those for is so that I can keep track of what's in those tubes so let me just I'm gonna back up just a little bit here so that you can see there we go get a better view so that's a good way to use those but you can use them for whatever you like I mainly did it as well because I figured in this particular subscription you have this to mess around with right then you have this area to mess around with on watercolor paper this is on watercolor paper so you're again playing with the colors here and here and all around right you can even use the back of this if you want additionally swatch or just mess around before you actually dive into the papers and that way you don't feel like you need to get anything else if you don't want to order anything else but you have enough here within the subscriptions to play with 
So on the front of the paper pack, it talks about the importance of good quality watercolor paper. I know a big thing is watercolor paper plays a vital role in whether this stuff goes off well or not because papers that aren't 100% cotton just simply bounce the watercolor right off, you know? And although they might be able to handle the water, they don't necessarily paint well. And I find that I will just hate what I paint or have to paint differently on like a mixed media paper or something that is said to be watercolor paper but is not cotton, you know? So these ones in your subscription pack are all cotton. You have my own watercolor paper, which is 100% cotton, 300 GSM, 140 pounds. And this is somewhere in between the Fabriano, so it's got like the softness and not as much sizing on it of Fabriano and the crispness of Arche and the weight of Arche and also the texture of Arche. So I think you really like it, but it's not as stiff because it doesn't have like heavily coated sizing, which is what is on the Arche paper. So it is more flexible and very easy to use. I do all of these paintings. This is all done on my own 100% cotton watercolor paper. I don't know why my, uh, there we go. Doesn't seem to be, oh, there it is. So you can paint on both sides. Then in comparison, I put in two extra samples here for you. This is a 50-50% cotton by Paul Rubens. And you'll notice the weight, the texture, even the lines and the way it's, uh, the way it's developed is much different on front and back. And then in comparison, you also have Winsor & Newton 25. So this is 25% cotton. And you'll notice right off that the difference between the 25 and the 50, you'll feel the difference. You'll feel how this is just, the, it's not going to absorb this pigment at all. It's really gonna bounce the color right off and it has to dry and you'll be more prone to watermarks and harsh lines on something that isn't 100% cotton because you just don't have the rag, you know? Um, so as far as Jack's cotton, this one is 100% cotton, but it is more of a practice to archival quality paper. If you're going to do something huge and professional, I still would use Fabriano and Arche, but if you want a great 100% cotton paper that you don't break the bank on, this is the perfect one to get you ready for the others because it's not going to get in your way and it's going to be something you can afford and actually paint on, you know, and get good results. I've tested it over and over and over again and no matter what, whether I'm doing a wash or I want more of a harsh line, it's not gonna bloom unnecessarily, which I love about it. But then again, I can actually add water and get more of a bloom. It's more of a forced bloom, or I can take it away. And that's what I've been really looking for in developing my own paper. So kind of really happy to be able to bring that to you. For now, anyway, we just keep selling out of it and it's very difficult to get. Okay, so those are the papers. You don't have to use them until you're kind of more acquainted with the techniques and the watercolors. I suggest the best way to get started is to do the swatch card so that you can get used to the colors and mix them on your palette or your surface. Swatch the basics here and just start attempting to color. Read everything that I have given you in this package before you move forward and really enjoy it and savor it. Get your sketchbook out and just practice doing some of these lovely paintings, you know? Okay, so that's the first, that's what's in the subscription. Uh, in the next video, I'm actually going to be painting the tulips like this. So keep a lookout for our next video. Again, all of this is challengeable. So if you want to do the challenge and just come up with something mix like a mixing chart with your tulips, that would be great to enter the challenge. You can even blow this up and photocopy it and put it on a b bigger sheet, or you can blow it up and trace it, project it, whatever you want. These are shapes for you to practice and something for you to look at so that you can kind of get an idea of the shading, but also think about the tulip shapes and the different ways that they open and close. Don't forget, I highly recommend you just kind of really look through these and also go online and look up these other master artists and how they um, evolved their florals because they are amazing. I think especially 
O'Keefe had a really interesting way of doing florals, as did Van Gogh. He had very distinctive brush strokes and, you know, used his color so boldly, but it was just brilliant. And Monet, again, completely different. So these three people that I highlighted, they really stand apart from each other and they give you a nice variety of styles for you to study and maybe even try yourself. As always, guys, happy painting. I hope you're having a wonderful time out there getting your pink envelopes and opening everything like it's Christmas again. It's Christmas and we're in spring and I'm so excited to paint with this. So I will be coming up and really diving in deep here with these colors and doing more and more videos as we move along through our month of March. Again, if you'd like to sign up, just go to jackswatercolor.com. There's also a contact page on there. So if for some reason you have a question or maybe something broke or didn't arrive correctly or you're missing something, just drop me a line and we will send it out to you in the next package so that you're not missing anything. Remember, everything's fixable and I have no problem at all helping you guys be really, really super happy with this because I think as far as I can hear from people, this is something that really does inspire your every month and keeps you moving forward and keeps you um, happily painting. I know that I love to get new watercolors and discover them. And, you know, it's kind of nice to have it just kind of arranged and sent to you and be able to join a big group of people that are all doing it together. That's the idea here. And I think so far it's worked out really well, don't you? All right, guys, have a wonderful day. If you want to store it, I didn't use these bags. I left them untaped so that you could rip the tape off and use it to store. Um, I also do recommend we do send out tins from time to time for you to use, especially if you just signed up. But you could take this card and you could glue these on there if you want because they're in order. And you could store it in one of the sleeves because I gave you a sleeve big enough. So if you didn't want to keep it in a tin, you could do it that way. Otherwise, I typically take one of the bigger tins that I send out and I just start adding them here, you know, and then I keep maybe a swatch card on the side and start labeling as I go. Um, I think we did put labels on them, but I'm looking at this one and for example, the label is gone and I don't know why, but in any case, it's really easy. These ones won't be mistaken. They're very distinct color differences. All right, have a great one, you guys. And I really, really am excited that you're here with me.